Welcome. The ingredients in a loaf of French bread and a tortilla are almost identical. Flour, water, salt, a little oil. But the result is quite different. There is one detail. The French bread has yeast in it. This little detail makes all the difference. One such detail in physics is how we deal with vector quantities. If we treat them as scalar quantities, the answer comes out quite differently. Now in dealing with bread, that's a matter of taste. When dealing with physics, it could mean the difference between the airplane flying and the airplane crashing. I'm Dr. Courtney. This problem has a lot of steps because there are several questions to answer and we are given quantities in vector form that we will need to analyze in component form. We are dealing with equations of motion and constant acceleration. Another word for equations of motion is kinematic equations. We're going to use those in component form. And this time, we are asked to find the initial velocity. which we'll designate as v-naught with a vector symbol over it. And we've been given the acceleration, which we will denote by the vector a, and the final velocity, which we'll denote by the vector v sub f, and time t. There are a number of specific questions that are also asked, and we will deal with those as we make our plan. As we develop this problem, let's note that we are given an acceleration vector of 2.6 in the i direction plus 3.8 in the j direction meters per second squared, that the final velocity vector is 30i plus 17j meters per second, and that the acceleration vector has been applied to the initial velocity vector over a period of 10 seconds, and that is what has yielded this final velocity vector. So right now we could make a sketch of the final velocity vector where the i component is the horizontal component and the j component is the vertical component. So the final velocity vector looks something like this just as a sketch. We'll refer back to this sketch later when we determine whether or not our calculation for the initial velocity vector is reasonable. As we make a plan for solving this problem, a good first step in any physics problem is to check the units to make sure they're in MKS units, and if not, to convert them. Secondly, we want to recall the equation of motion for the final velocity in terms of initial velocity, acceleration, and time. Now in this case, since we're asked to find the initial velocity, we want to rearrange the equation in 2 to express the initial velocity in terms of the other quantities the final velocity, acceleration, and time. Next, we're going to go ahead and begin to substitute values for the final velocity in component form. In fact, let's write that capitalized. That means we're going to analyze the horizontal and the vertical direction separately, and then, in our next step, we will express the resulting initial velocity vector as a vector. We are then asked a series of other questions. We are asked to compute the difference in speed between the first, the initial situation and the final situation. Now velocity as a vector can be expressed as a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude is the speed. So what we're going to do in our next step is to compute the change in the magnitude of the velocity vector, which is going to be the magnitude of the final velocity 
minus the magnitude of the initial velocity vector. We are also asked to compute the difference in angle between the initial and the final velocity vectors. So we do that by recalling that we can compute the angle at which a vector is acting as the inverse tangent of the vertical component over the horizontal component. We are also asked to show basically that, that analyzing a vector as a vector is important, that we cannot consider it a scalar quantity. This is illustrated by showing that the result of the change in the velocity, or the change in speed rather, does not equal the magnitude of the acceleration vector times the time. Now in one dimension, the, final, the change in velocity is equal to the acceleration times time, if the acceleration is constant. And we can do that as a one-dimensional problem. However, when we're dealing with vectors, if we don't deal with it in vector form, we get quite a different answer, and that detail makes all the difference. Now that we have made a carefully considered plan, we can evaluate this problem with confidence. First of all, let's check the units. And we quickly see that both acceleration and final velocity are given to us in MKS units already. Next, we're going to recall the expression for velocity, that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Now in this problem, we are asked to find the initial velocity, so we can solve for that by subtracting acceleration times time from both sides. Now we can go ahead and substitute values and compute components. Let's do the horizontal component first, that's the i hat direction, and we get that the initial component, so v naught sub i, is equal to the initial component of the final velocity, 30 meters per second, minus the initial component of the acceleration, the horizontal component of the acceleration, excuse me, 2.6 meters per second squared, times the time of 10 seconds, and this yields a horizontal component of the initial velocity of 4 meters per second. Similarly, in the j-hat direction, or the vertical direction, we will have that v naught sub j is equal to 17 meters per second minus 3.8 meters per second squared, also times 10 seconds, and this yields an initial velocity of negative 19 meters per second. To express that again in vector form, we have the initial velocity vector is equal to 4i minus 19j meters per second. These calculations answered the primary question, but a series of specific questions to analyze this answer were also asked. Specifically, we need to compute the change in speed. We do that by computing the difference in the magnitude of the velocity vectors. So that's equal to the magnitude of the final velocity minus the magnitude of the initial velocity vectors. Now recall that the magnitude of a vector is computed using the Pythagorean theorem so that the magnitude of the final velocity vector is equal to the square root of 30 meters per second quantity squared plus 17 meters per second quantity squared. Made that a little longer than I needed it. And that yields a magnitude of 34.48 meters per second. Similarly, the magnitude of the initial velocity vector that we just computed is 4 meters per second, quantity squared, plus negative 19 meters per second, quantity squared, and the square root of all that yields a magnitude of 19.42 meters per second.
And so the change in the velocity, excuse me, the change in speed is computed as 34.48 meters per second minus 19.42 meters per second, which is very, very close to 15 meters per second. It's 15.06 to be a little bit more precise. Next we are asked to compute the difference in angle between the initial and the final velocity vectors. Now we recall that the way that we find an angle, we'll start with the final angle, is to compute the inverse tangent of the vertical component of the vector we're considering over the horizontal component. So in this case, we have the inverse tangent. We revisit the final velocity vector we were given of 17 over 30. And as we compute that inverse tangent, we want to make sure our calculator is in degree mode, not in radian mode. And we get a resulting angle of 29.5 degrees. Similarly, for the initial, the angle of the initial velocity vector, we have the inverse tangent of negative 19 over 4. And that gives us a resulting angle of negative 78.1 degrees. So computing the change in angle, which will be the final minus the initial angle, we have 29.5 degrees minus a negative 78.1 degrees. And that yields an answer of 107.6 degrees. Finally, we are asked to compare the results of step 6, in which we computed the change in speed using vector analysis, with, that with a change in speed computed as the magnitude of the acceleration vector times time. Now that is equal to, using the Pythagorean theorem once again, the sum of the squares of the components of the acceleration vector so we have 2.6 meters per second squared squared plus 3.8 let me write that a little better for you 3.8 meters per second squared squared times the time of 10 seconds and this yields a result of 46 meters per second. So again, if we were analyzing this problem in a single dimension, the change in speed should be equal to the magnitude of the acceleration times time. But this is a vector problem. So the results of step 6 and the results of step 8 are not the same at all. Okay, as we assess our answer, there are a couple of things we can do to build confidence. First of all, we want to check our units, specifically unit analysis. We already checked whether we're in NKS units, but as we went along, for example, in our calculations for the magnitude of the velocity vector, we included the units of meters per second and meters per second. So when each of those is squared and the square root is taken, we end up with units of meters per second for a speed. And that's fine. That's what we would expect. So by including the units along the way, we've protected ourselves to some extent from substituting an incorrect value and making sure that we have included each term that is required. Secondly, I would like you to consider uh, the quadrants for the angles that we computed for the final angle and the initial angle. 
In the first case, the final angle was in the first quadrant, and since the, both the vertical and horizontal components of that vector, of the velocity vector, were positive, that puts that angle in quadrant one. And so we have confidence that this is a reasonable result. In the case of the initial velocity vector, we have a negative vertical component and a positive horizontal component. That puts us in quadrant four. So as we are using our calculator to determine angles by using the inverse tangent function, we always want to make sure that the resulting angle that the calculator gives us is in the correct quadrant because you may need to do some conversion to find an equivalent angle that's in the correct quadrant. Finally, let's consider uh, physical aspects for lack of a better term of V initial and V final. We were given the final velocity vector, and that's all we sketched on our sketch here. So when we considered the initial velocity vector, we started out with a positive, a small positive horizontal component. The acceleration in the horizontal direction was also positive. So we have a positive horizontal component, positive acceleration in that direction yields a larger positive final horizontal component, and that makes sense. What about the vertical component? Well, we computed that the, that the initial vertical component of velocity was negative. Does that make sense in light of our final answer, where our final answer is positive? Well, we're adding 10 seconds worth of a positive acceleration component, so we're adding about 38 meters per second, and so when we have 38 plus the negative 19, that gives us the positive 17 uh, meters per second as a vertical component in that final velocity. So that all does make sense and therefore by analyzing or by looking at our unit analysis, making sure our resulting angles are in the right quadrants and that the initial and final velocity vectors make sense in light of the acceleration we were given, we have confidence that this answer is correct. And as you can see the details did make the difference.